It's really not about Fred Wilson and his artwork or whether or not um, he's perceived to be an, an artist of African-American people. I've experienced the racism here in the city of Indianapolis, and it's still going on. Regardless of whether this statue gets built or not, regardless of whether Fred Wilson is acclaimed as a great artist, or you think that he's just a copycat. I don't want the community to look at this as this is the only statue we're going to get. The greatest benefit to the African American community through this is even if this does not even go through to fruition, we're talking again. I'm Brian Payne. I'm the president and CEO of the Central Indiana Community Foundation, and I'm the president of the Indianapolis Foundation, and, um, and I'm the, kind of the founder uh, of the Indianapolis Cultural Trail. We felt like if we're going to create something called the Cultural Trail, we should, beyond connecting arts and culture, we should actually commission some as well. The Fred Wilson project was one of those projects that we commissioned. He is a major figure in the international arts world. He's a contemporary artist, which means that, you know, it's not like he's a painter or something. He's really an artist of ideas and concepts. Museums have whole museums of the great things, of, of the beauty of one's culture, and another museum of the horrors of one's culture, but never in the same display case. But, you know, whose hand served the silver? Who could have made those things in apprenticeship situations? But certainly, whose labor supported a wealth that could produce the silver? You know, I don't think you'd want to do this all the time, but it really, it really does. I, I'm really interested in when you juxtapose one thing with another thing, a whole th new thought comes about. That's have to the part I wasn't sure of, because yeah. what I have drawn is that it would go vertically straight down. And, and I know the arts community was was satisfied. They thought they had done all the things that they needed to do to get community input. Let's go ahead and move forward with it. More like that. It's a post like that. <laughs> Fred has this really interesting frame of Indianapolis has all these monuments of heroes. And until we did the Glick Peace Walk, really none of them included African Americans. The one exception was this, this figure on the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. And so I, th I thought, well, who is this man? You know, if he's the only symbol for African American Indianapolis, what does that say about the city at that moment? And what does it say about the city at this moment if, it's, if it still is the only image? And I wanted to focus on him and think about him and let other people think about him. And so what we, uh, I thought, well, maybe we could reproduce him and put him somewhere else in the city and give him a different viewpoint to sort of be a reflection on this one, again, juxtaposing uh, one to the other. And Fred was like, let's mold him, take, I mean, take a, create a new version of him and put him in a position that is a different context. From Fred's perspective, a position of power near the city county building. And when we first saw the, when we first saw it, we thought actually uh, Caucasians would have. If anyone's going to have a problem with it, Caucasians are going to. You know, some certain amount of white people might have a problem with it. So the first couple of public meetings we had about it, African Americans uh, who met Fred and heard about the project, you know, were largely uh, supportive of it. Um, and then there's a couple other meetings where that kind of became more neutral. And one meeting it was a little bit more negative, and then a. Uh, a letter to the editor to the Indianapolis Recorder that went viral on the internet. Literally, the whole tenor of the project changed in 24 hours. That got the African American community looking at it from a different perspective and a perspective that they didn't embrace. There were some community forums to, I guess, re-establish re communication. Those didn't go well. We're really trying to just discern 
you know, who didn't like it, who liked it, who was supportive, who wasn't supportive, and it was very difficult to get to the facts. There was some generational gaps in terms of understanding and perspective. Uh, some people would have thought, oh, that's automatic. People would, would automatically feel that that was an insulting image. Others saw it as triumphant, as sticking it to the man, as, as a wonderful thing. Often those people were younger. The longer that we continue to separate each other by age and by opinion, the longer that our community is going to continue to not be emancipated. So I hope that this symbol is a symbol of our emancipation of that mind state in this city. We then try to find a way to have smaller, more thoughtful conversations to really understand what people's point of view was. And what we learned was, you know, I mean, if we had 100 people at those meetings, 97 of them, both black and white, didn't think we should move forward with it. And those are the people who cared enough to show up. So those are the people that mattered to us. It was determined this was not the, the project that we were ready for, uh, that we didn't want to communicate that Indianapolis wasn't ready for controversial art. We've taken the $175,000 that's left in that budget and are giving it over to another community process. What somebody said was put the community or public back in public art. So we've embarked on a process that, again, has been informed by the previous one, brings some new ideas to the table, um, and new people. So the process is important uh, just as much, in my opinion, as the final outcome in terms of whatever art piece or rendering comes out. And it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it because this is more of a committee-like process. Art usually is, at its best, a representation of someone's point of view, someone's different way of thinking, someone's talent and, and, uh, and vision. I think at the end of all of this, we'll be better for it. We'll be a community that can affirm the idea that we welcome art, we welcome controversy, and we handle that controversial issue in a way that affirms all different interests As an artist, he created a much bigger reaction and a much more ultimately thoughtful reaction than I think he ever dreamed he could. The piece isn't there, um, but the, the process created the kind of response in a way that every artist dreams about. It's not just art, the way folks were seeing it. It was speaking to a, a history that is still very present and real and charged. I think public art is, in, you know, it's, it's incredibly, it's an incredibly complex subject because if you make me, if it's a point of do I buy a ticket and go into a, or go into a gallery and confront it or not and get annoyed with it or not, okay, well that's fine, I just won't go to the gallery. But I have no choice, I have to go to work every day and you're making me confront this piece every day. I think that's a compelling argument.